Hello, hello. This is Derek from the One River Tea Cooperative. Here we are in Hulu Gen, home of the Shangmiao Cooperative. Hulu Gen is a very isolated village right on the borders of Hubei, Hunan, and Guizhou. Almost 95% of the people in this village are of the Miao minority group, and they're all working with this cooperative to create this tea. This is the golden green tea. This is the golden green number one. So we're gonna take a look at the processing, the picking, and a little bit about the culture in this very beautiful, isolated, mountainous region. So let's check it out. As mentioned, the Hulu Gen village is an incredibly isolated region in the mountains of Hunan, and one of the ways we found to get there is take a high-speed train to the nearby city of Jishou, and from Jishou, take a crazy hour-long car ride up the mountain pass to the Hulu Gen village. So here we are in the Shangmiao Cooperative store, storefront in Jishou, in rural Hunan. And what we're doing is we're sampling some of this fresh golden green made a few days ago. This golden green number two. And this old Shushu is 76 and he's in charge of shipping all of the tea from this tiny little shop. Okay, so this is Iha, this is your Arha. Okay. So yeah, the Arha is much more green, the Iha has a lot more buds. So the Iha looks better, but supposedly the Arha tastes better. So we're gonna give it a taste. So this Shushu also said that his favorite tea is the Lao Cha, which comes in summertime. So his favorite green tea is a summer pick, which just tells you how different people's preferences can be. After drinking a few cups of green tea with the uncle in the shop, the farmer's daughter arrived and started driving us up the mountain. This was the one hour crazy twisted mountain path that was so intense that one of our members got car sick and actually had to stop and throw up. It was a, quite a harrowing experience, but we managed to get there. And as you can see, this is the meow style of dining. We're all sitting around a table. There's a cloth over the table and underneath is a, is a bowl of live coals. This is really, really warming in the winter time. It was really nice to see this kind of environment. So here we are in the Xiangmiao Cooperative. They're harvesting Huangjin Yihao. This should be about 200 pounds. It's March 18th, so a few days before the equinox, a few days before picking really begins, a few rainy days too. And so this was harvested this morning and they're going to let it wither overnight just because the water content is a little too high. As this is March 18th, harvest has just begun a few days ago, and so the leaf pick is very small. The tea is very dry or wet still, and if you pass it through a rolling machine, it would just break apart. It's our first night here in the Hulu Gen village, so we're just getting acquainted with the facilities, with the tea maker, and he pulled out some really amazing teas, some single bush tea trees that he's trying out. He usually has a single bush that he makes tea from every year, just to gauge that year's harvest for this type of varietal. And so it's quite an experience to get to see how a master maker really understands his craft. We were lucky enough to stay in the production household itself, and the rooms are pretty bare. The concrete walls, hard beds, but really everyone's living here together, and so it has a really nice community feel. I'm in this uh, Miao village right now. Got one of these nice little hot coals under here. Yeah, we're looking at some green teas.
as this is a mountainous village, right behind the production household, you can see this huge wall of soil and you can see the amount of clay in it, the amount of minerality in it, and you see right above it how intense the vegetation is. Everything looks really, really natural and just so thick with growth. These early days of the harvest were marked by a lot of rain, and so the harvest quantity was reduced quite a bit. When it rains, you're not supposed to be picking too much tea, though the tea does need to be picked in order for later harvest to come through. So they need to pick all of the tea to make room for a later harvest of spring tea. And so even though the quality is not as good, they're still picking and processing in the rain. As mentioned, this village is 95% Miao, and so you see a lot of traditional Miao minority clothing, a lot of Miao headdresses, and they're giving a lot of work to the local villagers to help boost them out of this subsistence farming because in this area, this very remote area, there are not a lot of other options other than produce and tea. As is common to both the Tuja and the Miao minority groups, they live in large, self-constructed wooden houses. Here we are in a Miao village, and we are stealing some of the moss. We want to take it home, put it on a rock and grow it. <laughs> this idea of collecting moss is one of their childhood pastimes, and so it's really lovely to get to experience it. So here we are stealing moss off the roof of this meow house. Oh, I'm not sure how to cut. I'm going to bring it home and grow it. <laughs> <laughs> One very interesting thing about these houses is the way they build onto the old existing house. So here we have a newer kitchen and bathroom. Huh? <laughs> and over here on the other side, we have the more traditional wooden house. As you can see, these houses are made out of wood, very similar to the Tuja style up north in Hubei. Very similar to the house we rented. You have a main room in the middle that's used for congregating. You have these side wings. Oh, tomahayo la rola. These side wings that are actually very good for having fires, making tea, and drying meat. This village really does feel a little lost to time, as a lot of people still dress in the traditional clothing, the language they speak often is the Miao dialect that doesn't exist anywhere else in China, and so it's really lovely to get to experience these living cultures in these remote mountainous regions. The tea pickers are organized into small teams of about five or six, and they all pick the same bushes for the same days, and then bring their teas together back to the production household where they're weighed. Here the pickers are discussing which regions they picked. And this is really important because the tea cooperative is very large and they have a lot of different varietals all growing at the same time, all being picked at the same time. And so the tea maker needs to know if this is golden green number one or golden green number two. After the tea has been properly weighed and recorded, adequate wages are then given to the picking teams for their day's work. 
has mentioned, the pickers are grouped into teams, and so the wages are for the total amount of tea that was picked between the four or five of them. Thus, this woman goes back and they divvy up their earnings based on how many people were in the team and how many pounds of tea they picked. All right, let's look at the processing for the golden green tea from the Xiangmiao Cooperative. Here we are in the production facility. As you can see, it's an enormous, large warehouse-like building with concrete walls, a lot of machinery sticking in here. First, it begins over here on the left. These are the withering troughs. The fresh tea is put in the withering troughs. Then it's passed through the kill green machine. Then it's rolled on these rolling machines to the left unblocked in that machine with little girls nearby now and then eventually it's all steam dried on these hot trays with warm air coming through where the producers are standing at now let's look at all of these steps one by one a little more slowly these are the withering troughs where they place the freshly picked teas. Sometimes it takes a matter of hours, sometimes it could take over a day for the tea to wither down to the point wherein they'll pass it through the kill green machine. This is the large kill green machine. It's a conveyor belt where they're slowly passing the tea, the fresh tea, the withered down tea through this heated cylinder. And in the heated cylinder, the temperature will rise above a certain degree and that is where the tea will become de-enzymated and no longer oxidize. As you can see, as the tea passes through the kill green machine, it's blown by a fan and falls through two different exits. The lighter tea floats closer to us and this is the lower quality tea. There might be something wrong in the processing and this is where the tea master will take a closer look at it and see if it's properly been killed, the green has properly been killed or not. So as you can see, they're tossing the tea up here and slowly examining the lighter pieces that fall to the edges of the tray. This really helps them see if all of the tea has been killed in the proper way or if it needs to be passed back through the kill green machine. This is something that only the tea masters do and everyone else follows their lead on if the tea needs to be heated up more, if the new teas passing through the kill green machine have to be tweaked at all, or the temperatures and timings are all accurate. It's very, very detailed and they do it all by feel and experience. And so it's really great to be able to see them making this tea because even though the machine is killing the green, it still takes a lot of manual labor to make sure that everything's going proper. After the green has been killed and the tea has been properly de-enzymated, it will no longer oxidize and it can be passed through the rolling machine. The rolling machine twists the tea, gives it the characteristic shapes, and makes the cell walls a little more malleable so that when brewing tea, it'll brew up very, very quickly and easily. These rolling machines could be some of the cleanest rolling machines I've seen so far. And they're not new either. They're older rolling machines, but they're just kept very, very clean. I see brushes on all of them. I'm really impressed with the kind of care and attention that's being put into these guys. The penultimate stage of the production process is this steam drying. What's really interesting is hot air is coming through these small pans and they're twisting, they're lifting and moving the tea around to let it properly dry out. As you can see, there are two stages to this. One, they're in the heated pans where hot air is coming through. The other, they're in the nice trough where cool air is coming through. So there's this process of heating it in the hot, in the hot pan and then cooling it off in the trough. And they'll do this process two or three times just to make sure the processing's even and the tea is fully dried before it's moved on to the next stage. So here at the end of the process, the tea is almost entirely dry, but it hasn't gone through the tea xiang ji, the fragrance fixing machine. And so if you smell the tea at this phase, it almost doesn't smell like anything. It's really fascinating that they just need a little more heat in this final processing. This is the tea xiang ji, and they put the tea in here on these little sheets. They heat up the temperature, and this really pulls out the fragrance of the already dry tea. This is the final stage of the Golden Green production.
that is it. That is the Xiaomiao Cooperative's method of producing the golden green tea. And we looked at everything from the Hulu Gen Village to the Miao minority lifestyle. We looked at the way they organize their pickers, the way they pay their pickers, the way even though it's a machine made tea, there's still a lot of human oversight going on through every stage of the process. There's a lot of hands-on activity in the drying process, even in the kill green phase. And it's just really amazing to see such a beautiful tea. It was one of our favorite teas we found this spring. And just to go to the environment and see how beautifully stunning the environment really is. We featured some of this very early picked tea in our Ming Chan sample box, our green tea Ming Chan sample box. And we still offer a little bit of it on the website now, the golden green tea. So I really hope you got a chance to enjoy and appreciate this tea. And all that's left now is for us to get out of that village. So here's the final ride down off the mountain. And just to look, take a look at these crazy roads, this really one-way road through these villages, through these twisty mountains. It was really, really difficult to get to this area. And you can tell how isolated it is and how beautiful the tea and environment is, how pristine it all is, being so isolated in the mountains of Hunan. Again, this is Derek from One Over Tea. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.